it can be kind of daunting when you're taking a test or doing a homework or something like that and someone hands you a polynomial and they just say factor it with no hint, no uh, directions on what technique to use uh, because we've learned so many over the last few videos. You know, we've, we've learned factor using greatest common factors, uh, factor by grouping, trial and error. There was a whole lot of special factoring forms. And so when do you use each of these? Uh, if somebody said use factor by grouping, no doubt we could do that. But how do you know when you're supposed to use what technique? That's what we're going to look at in this video. What's your general strategy? What's your general approach? What's your thought process as a student when somebody hands you a polynomial to proceed through and, and factor the sky? So here, here we go. We're just going to walk through some, some kind of logical steps. Step one, always, every single time, see if there are any common factors among all the terms. If there are, we always start uh, by looking for the greatest common factor that we might be able to factor out of all the terms in our polynomial. Now, once that's been done, then the best approach is to look at how many terms you have because that'll kind of indicate what method you're gonna use. Um, if you have two terms, if you have a binomial, chances are it's going to be a special factoring form and we had three we had a difference of squares we had a sum of cubes and a difference of cubes and remember the the one that's not listed here is a sum of squares and remember sums of squares are always prime so if it'll factor it'll typically be one of these three here difference of squares difference of cubes or sum of cubes and that's if it's two terms now, what if it's three terms? Well, then you have a few different options. It might be like a quadratic trinomial that has a leading value of one, um, or it might be a quadratic trinomial that doesn't have a leading value of one, or it might not be a quadratic trinomial at all. It might be some other type of trinomial. And so for either of these, you can either use the trial and error method where you basically just uh, set up your empty parentheses and just try to think about what would foil to give you these uh, trinomials here. Or especially for this method with the leading coefficient of A, the grouping method could be helpful. Now I know you're thinking, well, wait a minute, Devin, I thought you said grouping was when you had four terms. Well, if you remember, uh, we did a few example videos like this. There's a way to take a trinomial and take this middle term and somehow separate it. I'm not going to get into the details, but separate it into two terms. And then you have four terms instead of three because you've separated the middle term. And then you can do factor by grouping on these guys here. So uh, these two methods here work even if it's not a quadratic, but um, you, you do use these two methods very, very frequently. So that's what you do if you have three terms. And if you see four terms, it's usually a dead giveaway that that's going to be factor by grouping. Uh, factor by grouping works best with four terms, where you group the first two terms and you group the last two terms. And again, I'm not going to go through all the details, but um, that's what you do when you have four terms. Once you've done that, once you've factored it, don't quit on it. Don't give up on it. It's very possible that your factored answer might factor some more. So make sure each of your individual polynomials in your factorization uh, are completely factored where they can't be factored anymore. And so that, that's our general strategy. This is what I think through in my head and it's what you should think through in your head as you're given just some random polynomial to factor. Uh, now I'm not gonna do a ton of examples in this video. I'm just gonna do one just to kind of uh, exemplify what, what it is we're, we're doing here, show what, what, ki what kind of thought process we should be going through. So let's say somebody gives us this polynomial and the directions simply say to uh, factor this guy with no hints, no help, no nothing. So the first thing I do before I notice that there's two terms or before I do any of that, I'm gonna look for any common factors and I see some. I see a common factor of five and between x to the sixth and x to the fourth, you can pull out an x to the fourth. You can pull out whatever the smallest degree is. So let's factor out a five x to the fourth. That's the uh, greatest common factor between these two terms. And then I have to ask myself, what times five x to the fourth would give me five x to the sixth? The answer is x squared. 
and what times 5x to the fourth, if I were to distribute this guy back through to these two terms and make sure that I still equal what I, what I started with, um, what times 5x to the fourth would give me 45x to the fourth? Well, I already have x to the fourth, so I think I just need a nine, just a nine only. And this is a minus, so this will be a minus. So good job, I factored it. I, I've gotten 5x to the fourth, I've got 5x to the fourth times x squared minus 9. But remember, I'm not going to quit on it. I'm not going to give up on it or say that I'm done. I need to look at each of these guys and make sure that they are irreducible or make sure that you can't factor those any farther. But the x squared minus 9, that has two terms. So it might be a, let's see, where is it? A difference of squares. And in fact, I think that it is is x squared minus 3 squared. So this will factor as 5x to the fourth, don't forget to write the leading term of course, times x plus 3 times x minus 3. That's a plus b times a minus b when you have a squared minus b squared. So this would be my final answer and so hopefully that illustrates this process in action here where you factor using greatest common factors then look at whether you have two terms or three terms or four terms to know if you're factoring with special factoring forms or the grouping method or what have you. Uh, and then uh, just make sure that all of your individual factors are factored completely.